one. Chapter 3 The Trucker and the Intruder A newer model Peterbilt shiny coat glistens from the loading dock security lights while gently touching the rubber dock pads at U.S. Dynamite. The driver releases the air brakes and sets the parking brake, then journeys inside. Lurking in the shadow of a 40-yard dumpster, a 19-year-old female waits patiently for the driver to disappear. She makes her move, limping with each stride to the truck's cab. She suffers a sprained ankle, a compound fracture on her left forearm, a deep cut on her forehead, and her left eye swollen shut. She pulls herself onto the tractor steps using her unbroken arm, grunting in pain with each step while doing her best not to leak traces of blood. She opens the driver door, grabs the steering wheel, and pulls herself onto the seat. Desperately, she musters enough strength to climb into the tractor's sleeper. The sleeper curtain is mostly open. She figures best not to disturb the truck's interior surroundings. She scrunches herself into the sleeper's dark back corner, trying to clear herself of the trucker's view. The trucker returns, pours his thermos cap full of java, takes a healthy swig, and drives away. After a few hours of the dark early morning haul, the sun peeks its shining face across the base of the Santa Cruz Mountains. The truck thunders down a steep grade, nearing the small town of Gilroy. The trucker ignores the no Jake brake sign he clearly sees and gives himself a thrill engaging it anyway. The mighty rumble possibly woke the dead from a deep grave but for sure opened the eyes of a sleeping Smokey, waiting to capture a guilty lawbreaker. Well, shit. The old cherries and berries shine brightly in the tractor's side-view mirrors. The trucker pulls his rig off the road into a local cafe's parking lot. The officer cautiously approaches the driver door. The trucker rolls his window down and smiles at the officer. You got me. The officer finds the trucker's comment easygoing and slightly entertaining. What you hauling? Dynamite. It's against the law to haul dynamite without notification. (laughs) I know. That's why I haul it. Where are you heading, youngster? Youngster? (laughs) You're the one with a baby face. Yeah, but I got a deep voice. Scares big fellas like yourself. Yep. I'm sure I look worried. I'm scared shitless of you, officer. Nolan. I somehow doubt that. The roar of your pickle cart sounded like you were doing at least double nickels in a 3-5. License, please. The trucker hands Officer Nolan his license. Well, I'll be damned. You're from Seven Mile. And you're from somewhere other than the U.S., the hell I am. I'm from California, IA. My great gramps was a gold prospector in this sparkling state. Yep, and I'm from Seven Mile. Where else would I be hauling dynamite from? I'll be heading your way next week. Gonna interview for the county detective job where you're from. Then your crooked ass knows I'm hauling dynamite. You don't pull no punches, do you? Cuff up your log and permits, please. <coughs> the trucker performs a fake cough and smiles at the officer. The young Lone Ranger glances at the trucker's smiling face shining from the morning sun and finds favor with him. He pulls himself to the top step of the rig, balancing with the grab handle. The trucker holds his smile. 
The officer looks past his grin and suddenly loses interest in his popping personality. He becomes more concerned with the blood stain smeared on the steering wheel. There's blood on your steering wheel. Are you injured, sir? The trucker glances at the blood, scans his hands and body, searching for where the blood may have come from. To his surprise, a bloody youthful face reflects in his visor mirror. The intruder pleads with a desperate hush signal. Oh, there was a buck lying dead in the middle of the road back a few miles. Big wheel struck the big boy. Blood everywhere. I collected some, I reckon. Figured it was best to remove the bloody carcass before it causes an accident. Look like about a nine-pointer. Still warm. A lot of good meat if you're interested. The trucker's mysterious passenger lets out a silent sigh. The underpaid cop ponders the feather he might receive for writing the trucker a ticket. He also imagines how many jars of Gerber, a few large, buys his newborn. The officer leans in, grabbing the door's interior panel, pulling close as he notices the trucker's wallet chain attached to his belt loop. Hey, buddy. This small town gig's not enough to pay the power bills, let alone feed a newborn. If I don't get the detective's position, I'll be looking to the system for help. If you get the detective job, trust me, you'll be working for the system, better known as the organization. At least I'll be able to feed my child. Officer Nolan glances at the trucker's wallet chain again and goes for it. Hey, pal. You wouldn't have a few founding fathers resting in that folded piece of leather in your right rear pocket, would you? You catch on fast. Well, just so happens, I ran into a few of them fellers on Tuesday at the bank. Matter of fact, two of them gentlemen want to meet you. The trucker pulls out two $100 bills. He gently slides them into the officer's fingers, which are resting in a taking position on the interior door panel. I'll put a good word in for you at the courthouse. Them feathers on those greenbacks told me to tell you. When you come up north, you better remember your old trucker, buddy, if you know what's good for you. Nolan nods at the trucker and steps down from the rig. I'm going to cut you a break on the racket this morning. You drive safe and watch out for them deer. The trucker quickly draws his forty-five. You're out of time, young lady. The intruder stares down the long barrel with her one unswollen eye. My drunken boyfriend beat me. He tossed me over his deck. I laid waiting for him to kill me. Lucky for me, he passed out. I kissed our two-week-old baby boy goodbye. I'm so sorry I've left him. He's beat me so many times, I stole his car. The car ran out of gas alongside the fence at U.S. Dynamite. Please help me. He'll kill me. My arm's broke. More than your arm is broke. What's your name? Cammy. Joseph Nathaniel. Pleased to meet you. I need to get to Tijuana Regional Hospital. My aunt's a nurse there. Will you please take me there? I can get into a lot of trouble smuggling you across the border. I'll do it. But if I ever see you again, you owe me a favor. Joe and Cammie both nod in agreement. They have a deal. <laughs>